Okay. This is old Cam. And this is not a screen tip. And today we're going to be talking about um, the economy. Are you better off today than you were four years ago? Well, that's always, it depends on who you are, because for some people they are better off, and some people they are a lot worse off. But the major, okay, but it also depends on who you ask, which is actually the question that cannot legitimately be act, asked or, um, or surveyed at the moment, because if you go to the Democrats, any member, any person that supports the President of the United States will simply tell you, we're turning the corner from that. They'll give you the party line. If you go to the Republicans, the Republicans will simply tell you, everybody knows we're not. And uh, so, therefore, you're not going to get an answer that's really responsive. All you got to do, though, is um, uh, we went to Venice Beach yesterday and spent like three hours there. We go to Venice Beach all the time, and Venice Beach looked like a graveyard yesterday. Yeah, actually, I was really surprised because we've been going to Venice Beach for how long have we been going? Well, you've been I going. Mean, you've been going there for many years. For I many years, I, but I, I, I've got like sixty years on there. So. Right, but for probably the last seven years since we've been, it's been getting worse. Uh, it, uh, over the last four years, less and less people have been going to the beach. I mean, we saw places that were open that are that are normally open. At uh, by eleven in the morning, that did not, that weren't open at one in the afternoon mm -hmm. because there's no business anymore. And actually, I'm, we've never seen it like that in all the years because I mean, okay, this was what midday yeah. from about twelve to about one thirty. Yeah, and there was only one person. Okay, Venice Beach is known for all of the people that come out there, the performers that come out to the beach to make money doing. Things. I mean, you actually, you'll see that they're, they're trained by people. They go from beach to beach. To, or, and uh, the same thing will be done at beaches all over the state. But there was one person yesterday performing at the beach. One. Oh, that's true. There was only one person. That's right. And actually, this is the first time in all the years that we've been there that some of those, some of the um, retail outlets, and now I'm saying, we, you know, not that... They've never been closed before, but there have been some larger retail outlets that are always open during the week, during the weekends, all the time. And to see them closed on a weekend when the weather's like perfect, well, I, and I call it perfect because it's like what mid yeah, seventies, I call mid days, it. It, it, it was a chamber of commerce moment yesterday at the beach. I mean, the weather wasn't. There was not many clouds out. It wasn't hot. It wasn't too cold. The water was. Well, she actually she didn't get in the water. She was in the water yesterday. It was gorgeous. It's yeah. like, you know, you know, as far as beach conditions, it was like heaven. I know. Put it that way. But um, it, 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 just the way it is because I mean, okay, we work. We, we actually have other jobs in the industry besides, you know, the ones we talk about. I mean, she, she's also she can tell you, for instance, about what real estate is really like in 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 the state of California. It's not what they're telling you on television. Well, because I, summer is the high season when it comes to real estate, and there's different times where it's busier. Like, you'll get a lot of listings um, right before the holidays. You'll get some right at the beginning of the summer because these are when people want to list their homes. And I will just tell you that the agents, they've had some at the beginning, and they're just like, they're looking for listings. Um, they're saying inventory is low, which is not that many people selling their homes and they're not getting as many listings. And the other part is, of the ones they're getting, I think more of them are just using point-and-shoot cameras unless the house is more expensive, but there's not that many houses that are for sale. And they're staying on the market a lot longer. It's because um, that, uh, no matter what they're saying, we talk to the people. I mean, they can't borrow money. If you can't borrow money um, to buy something, you're not going to buy it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what happened is, is that the banks are afraid they're going to get clamped down on again, so the banks are, they, uh, it's back to, I mean, it's it's back to when I was young, because, I mean, I've told people this a lot of times, my, my family's been in the house the construction business since 1911, that's, that's 101 years, in, this, in the state of California, and um, my father used to, my, I've seen it go like this, my father used to tell me the rules were if you could prove to a banker you had enough money in your wallet to pay for the house or whatever you wanted to buy, 
you could get a loan. If you couldn't, they didn't care who the hell you were. You could be Rockefeller, and they wouldn't sell you the house because those were the rules. Well, the other part we're, we're actually seeing it um, taking effect is in the entertainment industry. Because there always are, I mean, there's always events. Some, I mean, people think, oh, there's always somebody that has money. Yes, there is always somebody that has money. But as far as events go, let's just say they... They're downsized everywhere. Yeah, everything. Um, even like some of the major events, the celebrities are finding it harder to get into parties that they should be slam dunk be able to get in. Well, it should be slam dunk for an Oscar winner to get into any event that they want to go to for the day they get the Oscar to the day they die. It isn't that way anymore because we know Oscar winners that are being turned away from events because they're not, uh, they're only wanting, they're, they're basically reality stars are the only ones that are important anymore. If you're a reality star, you can get on in, into anything. But uh, it's also affecting where we do an awful lot of trade show stuff. Mm -hmm. And we can guarantee you that they, 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 the shows are getting smaller and they're narrowing the focus every single show on who can come. We know people that have been in the business, uh, in, the trade, in, the, in the trades for twice as long as we've been doing things and they can't they don't qualify for going to the trade shows anymore you know oh that is true they don't um and here's part of it is, is on some of those things the media has cut back so far either because they've narrowed the restrictions for media or because the media can't afford to go because i remember like the consumer electronics show last year there were people they're like oh well last year we sent six this year we're going to send two we know a person at SEMA last year that came from one of the major motor publications that was basically showed up in the young the older woman showed up in high heels and a dress and she wanted to know where she could go ask us you know you know where i can go hire a crew and he said there aren't any and not not now and she said well they told me that we didn't have the budget to bring a crew so i was to go here and hire a crew to do and they said anybody that is Anybody that has equipment is already working a show. And she said, well, how am I going to do it? I'm not a reporter. Because they're not sending reporters out anymore. They're sending an, uh, somebody that works for the company and expecting that person to be able to find pickups. You can't, uh, when you get there, everybody has already made, they've, bought, they've lowballed everybody they can to get jobs. Mm -hmm. And there are no more jobs, there are no more people available that they have a trade show to pick up people. Because the, if they're already there, they're already working. That's right. And if they're not there, they're somewhere else trying to find work. I mean, like in my side of the industry has always been in the film, uh, in film productions. I, down, I go walking every night because I, you know, I do, I go out with a cigar and then I've got one of the, one of the older members of a grip family down the street who has a business. He's not allowed to smoke in his house. So we go out walking around the neighborhood together and he tells me that in the last four years they have seen their business shrivel up to the fact that they have to go further and further out every week to get work. And he said right now they're burning enough diesel fuel that they're not making any money off of what they're doing but they have to keep doing it regardless because if they don't do it they're not going to get the jobs they're not even going to be considered so said so every week we lose money on diesel fuel just mm -hmm. to go to where the work is and um, and we, we got people griping all over well we're losing our jobs to other states because of the business executives think only about the bottom line well the business executives are using somebody else's money Mm -hmm. And if you're using somebody else's money, the bottom line is more important than, you know, loyalty to the area. I mean, um, when I was younger, I worked for people like John Ford and, um, and, and Henry Hathaway and others that basically, they, use, they tend to use the same people all the time. And they would, if they went somewhere, they would try to pack up as many as they could to work on them. Today, that's not feasible. A, a John Ford rep company couldn't exist today because John Cor Ford could not afford to take them from here to Canada or from here to Europe to work. And that's how it used to be done because the, um, the movie business was considerably more profitable. And it isn't 3D. 3D is the only thing that's keeping the business going at the moment. Oh, that's true, because if you took out the 3D receipts... <laughs> yeah, but um, it's, a, it's a bad economy. I mean... Well, I know, like, the other day when I was send, standing in line at the bank, I was overheard a gentleman talking who happened to be in the construction business. 
and he said, I make one-fifth the income that I did five years ago. That's one-fifth. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, he says, now when there's an opportunity to bid on a job, he said, you will always be undercut. He says, you either choose to take the job and grab it if you can, yep. um, or, um, or, or actually not get it at all. He said, because there will always be somebody else that will undercut you. Yeah, but it's always been there. I know that we're on my side. And he asked everybody, he says, if, you, if somebody wants to get a construction loan, can you just press, you know, just give them cash so they can hire people? Yeah. No, the um, businesses want to hire, but um, I, I actually saw a comedian the other day that was making fun. He, he was making fun of, trying to do impersonations of Romney and, and, and Obama both, and he said, you can't do an impersonation of Mitt Romney because you have to have a personality to impersonate, but which made Obama was better. He was doing his impersonation of the President of the United States. The President of the United States has often said this, that um, the Republic, they said that the, the Republicans basically look at everything as if it was a black and white rerun. You know, we, they just want to cut taxes for the wealthy and cut, uh, cut um, cut regulations. He said, well, the President of the United States, his philosophy is completely different. He wants to do nothing but raise taxes, increase regula reg regulations, and spend money. And if that doesn't work, you increase taxes, increase regulations, and spend money. And if that doesn't work, you increase taxes, mm -hmm. increase regulations, and spend money. And he said that, finally, they said that Einstein uh, obviously was a Democrat for the simple reason because Einstein created, right, Einstein actually was the one to give the definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I mean, people out there are all hurting. I mean, I had my credit card. I mean, all the credit card rates are being changed. I had one of my card rates basically now, uh, where you got to pay everything that you charge every month has got to be paid immediately at the end of the month. I know that. She's had all of her rates changed without ever notification. I know, and by law they're supposed to notify you. And here's the challenges on some of them. I haven't even been able to get information. And I know I was talking to one of the other ones who says, oh, yeah, we'll credit you, but you owe this much money. I'm like, they're like, if you want to do this, just pay this much. I'm like, you don't understand. I don't have an extra $200 to give you. Yeah. You know, they're just like, oh, well, just give us. It's like, no, I'll pay you once. Oh. oh they're, um, they're just... Uh, <laughs> The businesses, all the businesses that you go into now are becoming more and more hostile to the customers. It's just like, because the rules and regulations that they're having to undergo and the uncertainty of everything, and they're taking it out on customers. I mean, you, people that used to be nice and friendly are mean, bitter, and vindictive now. I mean, you, you just try, I well, mean. But they go from one extreme to the other. They're either really mean and vindictive, or they're overly nice. Yeah. And that overly nice is kind of like, I think they've been hit too many times by people that aren't paying. Yeah. So they're just happy to get anything. Yeah. But, uh, like I said, the, the, all the polls in this nation will say that no one, including the left, is happy about the direction of the economy. But uh, when all you're doing on the right and left is going for your base, you don't really care about that. Okay, here's the way it works is... The left and the right have never cared about anybody in the nation but the left and the right. If the economy continues to go bad under the left, the Republicans rejoice. If the economy goes bad under the Repu Republicans, the Democrats rejoice. They, they pray that everything is going to go wrong and don't care about the people in the middle. So Well, you know, we've been covering trade shows for many years, and a lot of times it's like the people in the industry think, oh, well, we're, we're doing something wrong. A lot of times they're not. It's just... As they say, it's just the economy, stupid. Yeah, and no one wants to listen. If you don't have, uh, they, they thought that high-def television was going to be a boom for the TV makers. It ended up just the opposite because people that used to have five and six sets bought one set. Mm -hmm. One, because they didn't have the money. I mean, uh, look at Best Buy, look at Circus City, look at these companies that made their living selling television sets. They went to the high def sets, which people couldn't afford to buy, and they killed the market. Those businesses are basically choking because they say, well, Walmart is damaging. No, Walmart has its own lines, folks. Mm -hmm. And Target basically has a very limited line. They are not hurting the sales market. It's just the fact that that a person that had that basically uh, would go out and buy, pay 120 bucks for a color television set 
today is not going out and pay $600 for a flat screen that's the same size. They don't have it. You know, there's a difference between 120 and 600. The people upstairs can't seem to get it through their heads that if you can't spend what you don't have, that the credit card companies aren't giving you the ability to do it. And since the credit card companies are under siege by government regulations, they're not going to give you any leeway. I mean, there's a Dodd-Frank law out there now that basically crucifies credit card companies if they uh, actually do what is needed to get the economy going. Ooh, that sounds really, really bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and here's part of what you're thinking, is the entire economy, okay, someone's got to have some money. Uh, actually, what they're criticizing is no one has the money. The wealthy aren't making any money, no matter what they're saying. Look, at, the stock market is making money. You know how the stock market is making money? Oh, businesses yeah. doing businesses with business. The public is not, and the public isn't investing. When the market goes up, it's on low trading. When it goes down, it's on high trading. Low trading means it's Bank of America trading with J.P. Morgan. It's uh, it's it's Caterpillar trading with a uh, with Denai. It's um, it's one company trading with another company to buy, they're basically doing deals with themselves. The money is not circulating, it's just going back, it's just like it was in a, uh, a reactor situation where the higher it, it, goes in and around and around and it's around. It's just circling around the room. And it's not being used. They said that, well, businesses are setting on over two trillion dollars. Well, you know, here's the other challenges. Because there's so much uncertainty in the market, the people that do have cash are holding on to it. And they're, and, they're, and they're moving out of states. The more you, okay, here they said, this is one which is the absolute abominable thing that they're being said. That there is no proof on record that uh, cutting taxes and stopping spending has ever helped an economy. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Ronald Reagan, um, Ronald Reagan, uh, Jimmy, uh, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Those are two sort of prominent things, and they said, "Well, they see, they, but you can prove under under Franklin Roosevelt that raising taxes and spending did it. It's called World War II. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, there was extenuating circumstances behind everything. The the money is there, the people that have it and the businesses that have it are leaving the states that are increasing the taxes. They're le getting ready to leave the United States to go elsewhere." We're, we've chased the high-tech industry out of the United States. We've chased manufacturing out of the United States. All we have left is a service industry, and a service industry has to be paid. And if you don't have any money, you don't go to restaurants. I mean, but like I said, for the first time, and God only knows how long, the entertainment industry has choked this past year. Mm. And now... The and usually when times, when I mean, like even in the times of war, the entertainment industry still did well because... Well, in depressions, the entertainment industry is always done Because people well. want an escape. But there is no, uh, what happens now is that there is no escape. Um, what's it? Every time we go, and every time we go to do a review of a movie, it costs us like 40 bucks minimum. Mm -hmm. That's to go do, out for the two of us to go to do a review. And the families cannot afford that. But the problem is, is that, um, uh, that we're going to go to Edgar Rice Burroughs. The, I think it was, yeah, I go right, Burroughs. Um, was, no, Arthur Conan Doyle was the one who said it, that uh, once you start forward, you can never go back. So they have to, they have, this is the 21st century. They're basically, in order to, to reduce cost in theaters, they're going digital. That all costs lots of money. The 3D thing is it's a projector. They had to have new projectors to go with the digital anyway. You just put an anamorphic lens on your thing and you've got it. But improvements cost money. And the theater owners have had to make the change in order to keep up with the uh, with the fact that the movie industry can no longer afford film. Well, we we've also seen that in broadcast, where some of the, the stations had to go up to high def, and they can't afford to well, they make went out the of business. business. So, yeah, they just. I mean, I know station owners that basically gave up forty, fifty million dollar stations for nothing because they couldn't afford to do they couldn't do the upgrade. It's an impossibility, but. It, 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 okay, what happens is government often interferes in business and has no idea what it's doing. They assume that what they're doing works right because the textbook says it's the way it works. It doesn't work that way. When they make a regulation and a rule that has to be followed, it costs money. Yeah. And if you don't have the money, you go out of business, and this is what's happening. 
is that the people don't have the money to move forward. So, I mean, this is going to be a topic that's going to continue for months. So until next time, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring check. And we're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information, you can go to uh, www.montybubbles.net. Uh, yes. net on the net or www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com mm -hmm. and wherever you're watching us thanks for watching subscribe to us follow our daily newscast in 3d follow us on twitter like us on facebook and thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet